new premium thermal pads. Do a little project with these and see if upgrading your pads can make a difference. Welcome to Machines More. These are the new TP3 thermal pads from Arctic and they are marketed as a premium performance product. So I'll go ahead and say that most PC builders will deploy thermal paste a whole lot more than they'll change a thermal pad. Uh, the one time an enthusiast might encounter it is if they're adding a water block to a graphics card or maybe they're cleaning up an old motherboard or cleaning up an old card, right? But um, these are important. Big thanks to Arctic. They did provide the pads for testing today, but as with all product reviews here on the channel, they are not paid reviews. So one way I thought that I'd give these a try was replacing the pads on a card here and see how much of a difference these upgraded ones would make. Thermal pads are usually used on the VRAM, the MOSFETs, and the chokes uh, for your GPU. Uh, for the most part, uh, as long as the stock ones are the right size and they're working acceptably and the card is properly designed, uh, there's no compelling reason to switch them out. Um, perhaps if you're overclocking the car, especially the memory, or perhaps mining with the GPU, then yeah, there may be a good reason to look into a performance upgrade simply by upgrading the thermal pads. Now, personally, I didn't find the VRAM temps on the stock 3080 XC3 to be objectionable. The car's cooler is a little bit limited, but uh, usually the VRAM temps are in the mid 80s uh, when the card's running full throttle. It's not the end of the world. And uh, usually even into the 90s, it's not a problem. To do this, you'll crack open your card. Every model of card is gonna be a little bit different, so I'm just showing you how I did this one. Uh, you'll have to do a little detective work. Uh, just make sure all the screws going through the PCB that are going into the cooler are backed out. Uh, when you're sure there are no screws left, you can jiggle the cooler and the PCB gently and carefully pry it apart. Then also make sure your fan cables are disconnected. Uh, if your card has RGB, there's usually an RGB cable, so also make sure you get that off. So now's the messy part, because you're gonna, you're gonna see some thermal pads fall apart. So go ahead and do a little accounting here. Take a picture if you need to, note it down. So that way when you replace the pads, you put the right ones back on in the right place. And uh, you can also measure your pads too, so you can use the right thickness. So after I opened up this car, I was like, dang it, the Arctic TP3, it comes in 0.5 millimeters, one millimeters, and 1.5 millimeters. But the ones on this card are an odd size that EVGA uses because the ones over the VRAM are super thick, like two and a half millimeters. And those are the main ones that I wanted to replace. Uh, they also use this thermal putty over the chokes. It's kind of odd, but just make sure you document what you have and uh, then clean the card up. It's not super, super critical to get the exact right thickness because it will deform into shape for the most part, but it's also, it's really important to get close enough. It's also important to note that uh, the thermal pads on this card were not in poor shape. I mean, this is a newer card, it's not a, an issue here. Oftentimes, if you opened up the card to repaste the die and the original pads are in fine shape, you can just go ahead and reuse them. I'm doing this just as a demo. So that's why I'm replacing them. Clean that off with some rubbing alcohol, clean off the components, go ahead and work on the cooler itself as well. And I have opened up cards where the pads practically crumbled and you definitely need to replace those. Now, usually you don't wanna stack thermal pads if you can avoid it. Um, it's not the worst thing. Uh, one way you can help it work well is to make sure that they're tightly pressed together first and then cut them to size. That way you can eliminate any air gaps, which I think would usually be the culprit if you realize that uh, your stacking pads is resulting in terrible performance, but it's not, it's not the worst thing you can do. Repaste that die. Spreading it is pretty tricky, but I did wanna make sure that we have even coverage here. Compare against your original diagram or your photo. Make sure you have the right coverage. I'm gonna leave the thick pads on the perimeter alone. They're fine as is, and they're also a very weird size. And I wanted to mainly test the VRAM temp, so we'll just go ahead and deploy the new ones here and replace the ones that had the thermal putty. And uh, if it all looks good, just go ahead and reverse the process, connect the fan and RGB cables and the screws back in in a star pattern. One additional thing with the XC3, the back plate doesn't have any contact with the back of the PCB, which is not really a big deal, especially for a 3080. For the 3090, this is gonna be a bigger deal, but it really doesn't hurt, so I just wanted to, you know, put some of these pads on the back where the VRAM is, and uh, for that I actually had to stack quite a bit of pad, but uh, just 
see how it works, right? So I did throw this back in the inner 200 test system and I did take out the bottom fans, tested this with an open case, extended Heaven 4.0 run, and I actually didn't think I'd see this big of a difference, but it's actually, it's, it's quite impressive. 86 and a half degrees is where the memory junction temps benchmarked in at previously. After the TP3 upgrade, that does drop quite a bit, three degrees. Again, I will stress these stock temps are perfectly fine for general use. If you're doing GPU mining and you're redlining the memory temps, it's very likely this kind of upgrade can give you a good buffer there. So qualitatively, I found this uh, these thermal pads very nice, flexible, and easy to work with. They're soft, but they're also not self-adhesive. So if they manage to touch, you can just pry it apart. Kind of cool. A lot of thermal pads, they get stuck together and you're Got to cut a new one, right? I also deployed these on the B660 ITX motherboard that I built into the T1V2 custom loop. Replaced all the old pads under the VRM heatsink, and those were pretty shoddy and crumbly cheap pads. In all three thicknesses, they come in a variety of sizing options. You got 100 by 100 millimeter sheets, 100 by 80 millimeter with pre-scored 20 millimeter sections, and you've also got a large size with uh, two big sheets of 200 by 100 millimeter sections. I do hope eventually these will come in two millimeter thickness as well, because that would be a pretty useful size. The pricing is going to vary based on the thickness and size you choose, but give or take $10 US for the small 100 by 100 millimeter uh, sections here. So this is definitely priced higher than their TP2 pads. Uh, those are more the uh, consumer grade ones, but if you're going to spend the time and effort to change out your pads, you're probably pretty serious already, and uh, you might as well just spend a few more dollars and uh, get the highest performing ones. So I hope you found this project helpful as a reference and found the testing helpful. As, as always, I appreciate if you give a like and subscribe. Links are down below. And thank you for watching.